Hello everybody and welcome to this last lecture in our course. And today I want to just talk a little bit about um, adolescent uh, alcohol and drug use. We can make uh, um, we can start by making a broad generalization that despite everything you hear in the media, alcohol um, use and drug use among adolescents has um, been declining. There have been some little blips, ups and downs, but um, since the 1960s when it was at its highest, uh, particularly with drug use, um, overall use among adolescents of drugs and alcohol um, has been slowly um, going down. There was a large study done in 2010 that looked at uh, over 45,000 high school students and um, and asked them a whole bunch of, of uh, different questions. But um, essentially what they found is that um, uh, with the possible exception of marijuana, um, overall use of drugs um, and alcohol have been um, going down. It's going to be interesting to see what the next few years uh, brings when it comes to marijuana. Um, again, it's still illegal in most um, states, but now that we have, I think, seven um, states in which it is fully legal, including California, Colorado, Oregon, Washington, and so on and so forth, there's been some speculation that the rate of marijuana use uh, is starting to rise, but um, it's, it's really too soon uh, to tell uh, about that. Uh, as I already mentioned, um, um, even alcohol use uh, among adolescents has been declining and um, continues to, to uh, go down every year. Um, one of the things we have found among adolescents and college students is that um, while the, the rates of drinking among males and females are relatively similar, um, you find a very big difference in um, binge drinking, which is much, much more common and historically among men, but um, also um, there's been some statistics to indicate that binge drinking among women um, is starting to rise, and um, and that's a particularly uh, particularly harmful way, I guess, to drink. Um, but it's so um, social in in uh, some contexts that um, um, the consequences of that are probably um, going to be seen in the future. Um, Different ways of drinking clearly um, have changed among adolescents. Uh, I talk uh, clearly to my kids, and um, I listen to their comments on uh, um, not only their drinking behavior, but other people's drinking behavior. And this pre-gaming, um, I think, is, is uh, a big issue um, among adolescents and high school students. And um, clearly, the, the difficulty here is that when you drink a lot, um, your um, I've been told <laughs> that your ability to make uh, decisions um, wisely uh, goes down. And so part of the difficulty with this alcohol and particularly binge drinking alcohol use is the increase um, in all kinds of other things. Again, um, various risk factors that can be problematic. We do know that um, alcohol um, is particularly a risk for um, some adolescents. And indeed, we know that um, if you come from a family in which um, there is heavy drinking, um, uh, clearly there's the genetic factor, predisposing factor, but also there is the, um, the modeling factor that, uh, um, that adolescents uh, see in their family. and um, we know that adolescents are much more likely to drink if their friends drink, and uh, that's not a surprise to anybody. Uh, that certainly is a risk factor. If you're hanging out with uh, partiers, you're probably a party yourself. And then lastly, um, the risk factors that really center around, for instance, the, the, um, the association of um, alcohol often with depression and particularly um, suicide attempts um, we know that uh, um, some adolescents that are prone um, to depression, uh, al alcohol for them is much, much more likely to be a, a problem. Um, hallucinogens, um, LSD is probably the most uh, uh, common of these. Um, they had their large popularity again in the 1960s and 70s. 
and uh, hallucinogen use uh, went way, way down. Um, and that's probably a good thing um, simply because while you can't um, get addicted to hallucinogens, uh, their effect on the brain is particularly problematic. Uh, with just about all of the drug um, uh, rates going down in terms of adolescence, I think one of the benefits that has uh, um, certainly accrued from um, education and particularly education in school settings is the real risk that uh, um, some of these drugs um, are for um, adolescents and uh, the hallucinogens are particularly uh, problematic. Um, marijuana is technically considered a hallucinogen and uh, it um, certainly has its advocates um, on either side, uh, but the research does show that heavy marijuana use, particularly among adolescents uh, when their brains are still developing, is um, potentially problematic. And um, um, as I said, uh, all, along with all the other drugs, marijuana use had um, recently gone down, but um, it's probably going to be uh, seeing rises in the next uh, few years. Um, the legality of marijuana um, doesn't affect, obviously, its uh, potential harm. I've read some research that uh, has found that marijuana use among adults, as long as it's uh, relatively um, um, moderate, is uh, not problematic. But the research does show it is problematic for the developing brain of adolescents. Stimulants um, uh, use uh, is certainly been around, and uh, cocaine and the various um, amphetamines. I don't know about you, but uh, I do like my ca caffeine, my coffee in the morning, and with the caffeine. And uh, so, mild stimulants, uh, not so problematic. Cigarette smoking. Um, is uh, clearly a uh, delivery system of nicotine. And um, as with all the other drugs, uh, smoking cigarettes, uh, um, the rates of smoking cigarettes have gone way, way, way down recently. Uh, but uh, the rates of vaping have gone way, way, way up uh, recently. And uh, clearly, cigarette uh, smoke is uh, uh, associated with all kinds of dangers. And while vaping is uh, um, absolutely safer than smoking cigarettes, we still don't know what the dangers are to vaping over the long period of time. Um, with regard to um, um, smoking among adolescents, we do know that the earlier you start smoking, the uh, in, as an adolescent, uh, the harder it is to quit and the more um, damage likely to be over the long haul. We are often encouraged, I watch television, I see um, uh, advertisements constantly encouraging people to quit. And the reality is, is quitting um, greatly reduces any kind of long-term damage. But if you smoke, uh, even for uh, a year or so in adolescence, your uh, rate of getting lung cancer stays elevated throughout your life. So it certainly has that uh, potential long-term um, damage. The reality is, is smoking among adolescents has has um, become perceived as less and less cool uh, than it used to be, and there are clearly more and more restrictions on smokers, and um, so that's probably a huge benefit uh, that's been realized, uh, as we were saying before, with some of the educational um, um, processes that uh, adolescents, adolescents have been subjected to, not only in on television but in school is that the, the whole idea of it um, is considered by adolescents themselves to be less cool than it was even 15 years ago. With regard to um, stimulant use, cocaine, again, um, was very, very popular in the 1980s. Uh, nowadays, uh, cocaine use is uh, minimal among adolescents and uh, certainly rates even among adults is much less. There was a period of time too when uh, clearly amphetamines, which you can um, take in terms of pill form, but uh, more popularly um, meth, which was uh, um, uh, again popular, um, much more popular around 20 years ago. All of these things, uh, um, the rates have decreased among um, adolescents. 
In terms of some of the other stimulants that have um, increased ecstasy is probably um, the drug over the last 20 years that has um, uh, shown the biggest uptick in use and um, um, and that certainly is a problem. I think we've heard a lot about some, some potential harm uh, ecstasy, but uh, these things are, as adolescents know, available out there if you want to use them. And uh, adolescents, even though they do know the danger sometimes, um, um, will um, use them, particularly if their friends do. The uh, um, over-the-counter um, depressants, and particularly um, the opioid uh, painkillers that has been such a problem. This is the big, huge um, growth area over the last uh, five, six years among not just adolescents, but among the population at large. You have to be living under a rock to not have heard uh, about the uh, um, huge numbers of um, overdoses that have taken place um, over the last few years. And the scenario is uh, pretty typical. Um, it's uh, you get injured and um, you're getting a painkiller. I remember uh, um, going to a doctor a few years ago. I had uh, some back problem and I was traveling overseas. And uh, he said, well, let me give you a painkiller. And he gave me a prescription for 80 Vicodin. And I thought to myself at the time, 80? Who needs 80 Vicodin? But um, um, the difficulty with the depressants, and particularly the opiate depressants, um, is that they're very, very dangerous and they're easy to overdose on. Uh, and that becomes uh, the difficulty with regard to some of these drugs. As I mentioned earlier, opiates are among the most physically addictive. And as, we, as, as uh, people take um, opiates, they need more and more to get the same effect. But what does not change is the threshold um, in which you have an overdose. So the, the opiates are so dangerous because it's so easy uh, to overdose and the difference between taking it and getting high and taking it and having an overdose um, gets thinner and thinner. Potentially problem uh, um, for adolescents. We do know too that the uh, um, increase recent increase in heroin use, again, not just among adolescents, but among uh, the population at large, um, is a byproduct of this uh, easy availability of uh, painkillers. And um, that certainly has caused uh, plenty of problems. I live here in Pennsylvania, and I hear um, quite a lot about the heroin, um, the, the ease in which you can get heroin um, out in the middle of the sticks here. Uh, and again, part of that is uh, um, due to the opiate um, over-the-counter opiate, opiate um, painkillers. The inhalants, um, again, as a category of drugs used by adolescents, has gone down significantly. Uh, I certainly remember when I was in high school hearing about people that um, would sniff glue or would, uh, um, um, you know, sniff uh, certain kinds of uh, um, inhalants. This um, is uh, clearly um, very, very dangerous. It's easy. Again, um, these these drugs are toxic when they're inhaled, and particularly in an enclosed room, some of them uh, um, uh, are have all kinds of stuff in them that uh, affects brain cells functioning. So uh, um, this use has gone down significantly as well. When we look at some of the factors um, that are predictive of who will use drugs and who will uh, um, uh, um, be harmed by them among adolescents, we do know that the earlier one begins, um, the, the more problematic it is over the long term. So you can see this, this uh, study, Hinkson et al., um, revealed that, that uh, adolescents that begin drinking alcohol before 14 are much more likely to have a problem um, by the time they hit the legal drinking age. Uh, so early substance abuse is, is uh, potentially problematic. We already mentioned that uh, if you see um, drug and alcohol use um, in your in the home you grow up in and it's modeled for you um, that's potentially problematic and we know uh, that uh, if your friends use it you're more likely to use it uh, as well so that certainly is a, is a risk factor and um, potentially problematic um, we also know that um, there's correlational studies that have connected um, adolescents and um, 
adolescents and drug use. And uh, here are the, the factors that if you're born into a high-risk family, you grow up in a very harsh parenting environment. Um, you have uh, conduct problems, school problems. Um, there's a lot of conflict with parents. Your parents aren't around very much. And, and clearly, probably the most important factor is that your friends are um, users. These all greatly uh, increase the risk of um, adolescent, um, not only just use, but also abuse. We do know um, that um, alcohol and drug use are uh, potentially problematic, uh, but the reality is, is most um, adolescents that do dabble in these drugs and uh, use drugs um, are not permanently harmed by that, and um, uh, and many of them slowly um, um, realize that uh, the dangers aren't worth it, and uh, it doesn't affect them long term. And uh, some of the factors, of course, that that uh, nuance and affect this is the level of education. The more educated you are, the less likely you are to abuse these drugs. Um, the more religion is important in your day to day. Um, uh, uh, decisions, uh, the, the less likely um, drug and alcohol abuse are. Uh, these 